So each lesson ends with a small homework problem for you to complete. These are going to start out uh, quite simple for some of you, particularly those of you that have some programming experience. But by the end of the semester, we'll be doing some pretty wild things on the daily homework. Um, so here's how this works. The homework are part of the lesson. They're really designed to be the point where you demonstrate that you've understood the material. If you understand that lesson, then you should be able to complete the homework. If you can't do the homework, you're struggling. The first thing I would suggest is go back and review the lesson content. The next thing you can try is asking for help on the forum uh, or in our online office hour system, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but I just want to show you a little bit about how the, the homework system works. So here's, um, here's the first day's homework problem. Um, you'll notice that the deadline is shown here. For the first two weeks, we allow you a little bit of extra time to complete the homework, and that's just to kind of facilitate people that might be joining the class late or take a few days to figure out what's going on or whatever. Um, so all of the first two weeks of homework are due uh, Sunday night, kind of the Sunday right before uh, Labor Day. Um, but the deadline is clearly uh, stated here. Um, and you, uh, you have code in the editor. There's a description of the problem. Um, and let's see here, sorry, I had the solution. So we'll give you, sometimes we'll give you some starter code, sometimes we won't. Um, and your job is to, to solve the problem. Um, and you know, not, not too much to it. Um, the way you submit your code is the same way that you submit all of uh, the playground examples. You hit this play button over here. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna run tests on your code and we're gonna tell you whether or not we consider your code to be correct or not. Uh, we try to do this in a way that's as uh, helpful as possible. Uh, usually what we'll do is we'll say, if your code works, great, thumbs up. If it doesn't, here's what's wrong. Or here's one place where we tried, we ran your code and we expected something to happen and something didn't happen or something different happened or you know your code crashed or something. Um, so again, we'll try to explain exactly what we were doing uh, and how the uh, behavior of the program that you wrote differed from whatever we thought uh, should happen. So in this case, you'll see that um, when I ran the code that uh, prints hello student, the instruction said to print hello world. Um, and so the, uh, the, our, our auto grader will say, uh, here's what the solution did. What we were expecting to happen was for hello world to be printed. And here's what your submission uh, printed. It printed hello student. So you uh, have until September 6th to fix this problem. Um, we always give you, on both homework and quizzes, as many attempts as you want on all of these programming assignments, uh, all of these programming questions without penalty. Um, now, there are deadlines um, for the homework, and there's also deadlines for the quizzes, obviously, so you have a fixed amount of time, but we never penalize you for attempts. That's how you learn. Uh, you guys are learning this, and the more you try, the better you'll get at it. Um, and sometimes it can actually pay uh, off to struggle with one of these programs for, for quite a bit. We've seen students sometimes come for us on the help um, on the forum for help and they've submitted the code like 60 or 70 times and you know that sort of determination will actually take you a long way in computer science. Um, all right so in this case you know let's let's see maybe I'm gonna edit my code a little bit maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna break something uh, now it doesn't work at all so I see some error output that said that um, this indicates you know there's a there's a problem with my program I couldn't even run it. Uh, much less try to determine if it was correct or not. Um, the other thing that I'm going to point out for some of you, particularly that have some programming in background, is that we also do uh, enforce some rules about style in this class. Um, so let me give you an example of that. Uh, well, here, let me, this is not a hard problem, so I feel sort of comfortable uh, divulging the solution here. Um, uh, oh, see, even I make mistakes. Um, so this is what you'll see when, you, when you've completed the problem. Uh, all of your previous attempts uh, are saved here over on the left. Uh, I was playing around with this before, and so I, you know, I have some uh, previous work to experiment with the system. Um, if you want to go back to an old uh, attempt, you can hit this restore button. That'll reload that work in the editor. Um, even after you complete the problem, you're welcome to continue to experiment with different solutions. All you have to do is submit one correct solution before the deadline in order to get credit for that homework problem. Um, what I wanted to point out though, is that even after I've solved, so let's say I've solved this, okay? Now let's say I put an extra space here. Now what you're gonna see for the next two weeks is a warning message because we run a program called CheckStyle 
that enforces certain rules about how your code looks. You can think of this as sort of like a certain type of grammarian for, for code. In this case, Chuckstyle has a rule that says when you use a semicolon to end a line, there shouldn't be a space in front of it. And we violated that rule because we had this extra space here. Chuckstyle is usually pretty good at explaining to you what the problem is. So in this case, it says, you know, a uh, semicolon is preceded by white space and it tells me what line it's on. There's only one line in this program. So check style will help you learn how to fix these types of mistakes. Again, for some of you that have programmed before, maybe in high school or, you know, in another class, these rules may be a little bit different than what you're used to, but they are incredibly helpful. And there's two reasons. One is that this is how real programmers work. Every, you know, uh, organization that you would go uh, write code for has guidelines about how the code is configured, how the code looks and how the code, uh, what sort of style choices people make. And the reason for that is it makes things a lot more readable. We do that in CS125 for the exactly same reason, because when you go for help and you're asking the course staff or other people to look at your code, it's much easier for us if everybody in the class is writing code that has a consistent style to it. This will make more sense to you as we go along for the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, as we start to write some code that has some different structure to it. I'll point out places where you know you might have some problems with this particular part of our of our um, you know assignment grader. Um, but again, for the next two weeks, we're not going to take off points for having problems with check style, but we will warn you. After that point, if you submit code that has some sort of check style problem, we'll just reject it, send it back to you, ask you to fix it. Again, you have as many tries as you want so you can correct those mistakes and still get full credit. All right, so we're off to a great start. Did your first homework problem. Uh, you've gone through today's lesson. Um, tomorrow we'll have more to come.